Everybody just thinks I'm some stupid YouTuber and they don't really respect my talents, but they'll pay. They'll all pay. <laughs> uh, well, okay, let's start the video. Jacksonville versus Chicago. The Bears are coming off of their most impressive game of the season last week versus a terrible Carolina team, while the Jaguars are coming off of their first win overall. Like most games, this game comes down to being able to pressure the quarterback, and the Jaguars, despite their record and some struggles, have the personnel to do that. Javon Walker has really started to develop after being picked first overall and looking like a draft bust, and obviously Josh Hines-Allen is one of the better players in the league. And whenever you're playing a rookie quarterback like Caleb Williams, that is going to be important. My key stat of the game is that Caleb Williams' passer rating is 20 points higher on throws under two and a half seconds than it is on throws two and a half seconds or more. Now, this might not be surprising because you can say, well, for most quarterbacks, the longer they hold the ball and try to ad lib, the worse that they are. But guess what? This is my video, and I think it's an important stat, so you can kiss my nuts. I think the Jaguars are going to get just enough pressure on Caleb Williams and make him have enough bad decisions to the point where they're able to sneak out a win 20 to 17. Buccaneers versus Saints. What did I tell all of you the moment the Saints went 2-0 and they had this juggernaut start to the season? I said, you can never trust Derek Carr. And what has happened since then? They've lost three games in a row. Derek Carr is injured, which means that Spencer Rattler, you may or may not have heard that he physically looks like Patrick Mahomes, is going to get his first ever NFL start. Meanwhile, the Buccaneers pretty much continue, despite their loss to Atlanta last Thursday, to put up a lot of numbers offensively. And Baker Mayfield continues to put up similar numbers to the quarterback who was in Tampa before him. I forget his name, but I'm sure he's irrelevant. The key staff for this game is that Mike Evans is a touchdown monster, but in his last 11 games versus the Saints, he has just two touchdowns, so that's something to look for. But overall, I think that Spencer Rattler will struggle in his first NFL start, and it will be enough to put Tampa ahead and give them a 24-14 to win. Green Bay versus Arizona. Arizona is coming off one of the biggest upsets of the early season so far with their win on the road versus the 49ers last week. And if you dig a little deeper into the career of Kyler Murray, you will see that October is his best month by far, both individually and as a team. So basically, he's the definition of peaking early, just like me in bed. Anyway, the Packers had a solid win over the Rams in their last game, which was also Jordan Love's first win of the season. Love is still pretty wild, and he's a lot closer in play style to Brett Favre than Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully he doesn't have the same off-field habits habits, particularly as it refers to welfare as far. But still, he's the type of guy that you can be in any game and also out of any game with Jordan Love as your quarterback. My key stat of the game, as I alluded to, Kyler Murray, for his career, is 13-7 and in October, but 17-32-1 in every other month. So if the Cardinals are going to steal a win on the road versus the Packers, it would be in October. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think the Packers will win. Sure, Love might throw an interception or two, but I think that the Packers will do enough on the ground to win this one 27 to 20. Indianapolis versus Tennessee. The Colts are coming off of their best offensive performance of the season, putting up 34 versus Jacksonville with Joe Flacco at quarterback. Unfortunately, they ended up losing that game because their defense was doo-doo. Now that Anthony Richardson is back healthy, it does raise some questions whether or not he is the long-term answer, but being the fourth overall pick quarterback and barely having half a season's worth of starts under his belt, he still needs a little bit more of a sample size. Luckily for the Colts, they are going to be facing a Titans team that is 1-3 and three and is starting a troubled statistical quarterback of their own from the 2023 draft, Will Levis. You got two super hyper-physically talented SEC quarterbacks with shitty college production matching up against each other. This is what football is all about, folks. My key stat of the game is that Anthony Richardson this season is completing just 50.6% of his passes. The league average is 65.6. However, I do think Will Levis will make a mistake that will go viral and will be hilarious to everybody except maybe Titans fans. And it will be enough to give Indianapolis a sloppy but much needed 23 to 20 win. Philadelphia versus Cleveland. This is really not a difficult decision for me. I understand that people think I'm an Eagles homer but the Browns are so terrible and Deshaun Watson is so terrible that despite his historical contract, there are a lot of people that are wondering if the Browns will just eventually bite the bullet 
it and end up playing Jameis Winston instead. We're getting close to that point. I mean, that's how bad Deshaun Watson's been. And I'm not talking about off the field. Their offense is anemic. Their offense is terrible. And yes, I admit my Eagles have their faults, but they would have to have like the worst game ever in order to lose this game, in my opinion. The key stat for me is that Cleveland is 32nd dead last in yards per play. So this is a just terrible offense. And despite the Eagles' defensive struggles over the last season or two, I think that they'll do enough to win this game pretty handily, 28 to 10. Houston versus New England. It's still pretty awkward to think that we live in a world now where the Houston Texans are expected to go into New England and dominate the Patriots when so many of us lived through the Patriots dynasty for two decades. But we are in that place now. The Texans are coming off of a somewhat uneven win at home versus the Bills. But guess what? You'll take wins any way you can get them in the National Football League. CJ Stroud this season hasn't been quite as special as he was in his rookie season, but he still is better than any quarterback the Patriots are going to be trotting out there. Or will he be? Because that's my key stat of the game. No more Jacoby Brissett. Now, for all I know, Drake May, who is the third overall pick and is going to have his first career start in this game, could end up being a terrible quarterback and he could end up being just as bad as Jacoby Brissett. But at least there's some uncertainty with Drake May that there isn't with Brissett. We know that Brissett has a low ceiling. We know that he really doesn't offer much. We don't know for sure what Drake May is yet. Who knows? Maybe Drake May will end up being another CJ Stroud or Jaden Daniels. Who knows? But I don't think this game will be the coming out party that he wants. I think the Texans are going to win this one pretty comfortably just because offensively they have so many more weapons and so much more talent. I think the Texans win this comfortably 35 to 13. Baltimore versus Washington. The Commanders and Jaden Daniels are the darlings of the NFL thus far. We all love superstar rookie quarterbacks, don't we folks? And Daniels has been just that. However, the Ravens have started to turn it around after a 0-2 start. They've won three in a row, including an impressive comeback win on the road in Cincinnati last week where they put up 41 points, albeit with a little bit of help from Cincinnati's kicker. But still, this is the Ravens that we all kind of expected to see at the beginning of the season. Their offense is in full swing. Derrick Henry's operating at a high level. Lamar Jackson seems to have found his groove. And again, this is a team that throughout Lamar Jackson's tenure in the regular season has been a dominant team. They win games at a dynasty Patriots level rate in the regular season. Now the postseason, we all know it's a different story, but in the regular season, this is the type of team that racks up wins. My key stat of this game is that Baltimore's offense, unsurprisingly, is first in yards per carry, whereas Washington's defense is 31st in yards per carry allowed. So basically, the Ravens are going to stomp a mud hole in Washington's defense's booty, whether it's Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry, or both. I expect the commanders to be able to put up points. I expect Jaden Daniels to have a good game again, but it's not going to be enough. I think that the Ravens will win this one 38-31. Chargers versus Denver. Well, 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 what do we have here? We have a battle of elite defenses and also teams that have kind of crappy offenses, but whatever. The Broncos are coming off of their most impressive win of the season thus far, and Bo Nix's best game of his career, at least throwing the ball easily. Bo Nix's ceiling is still kind of to be determined, but over the last couple weeks, he has actually shown some sort of competency that he really wasn't showing over the first three or so weeks. So maybe he's just a late bloomer. I mean, he did start like a hundred games in college after all, but I expect Denver's defense and I expect Bo Nix to be up and down. The real question for me is whether or not Justin Herbert is going to be able to get his career back on track and start performing like an elite quarterback that we all expect him to be because of his physical tools. And the answer is, I just don't know. The saving grace for both of these quarterbacks is my key stat of the game. This is a battle between the top two teams in points allowed per drive. So this is going to be, at least it should be, a defensive battle. And although my brain is probably telling me differently that you don't want to trust Justin Herbert because he's kind of like a Matthew Stafford where the physical tools are amazing, but you just can't trust them to win games consistently. I think the Chargers will do just enough. I think J.K. Dobbins will have a big game and that'll be just enough to get the Chargers to win. You don't have to score a lot of points to win games. You just got to score more points than your opponent. And that's why I think the Chargers win this one 20 to 13. Pittsburgh versus Las Vegas. Oh my God, try not to come in your pants, but we have a Justin Fields versus Aiden O'Connell battle on our hands. At least to begin with, the Raiders are coming off of an embarrassing road loss. Is it still embarrassing? Because it's the Raiders. I mean, they've been dog shit basically for the last 35 years outside of a couple years in the early 2000s, which is a shame because their uniforms are really cool. But either way, the Gardner Minshew experiment has finally been over. 
and they're going with Aiden O'Connell, who is, I guess, trying to cosplay as Rich Gannon and Ken Stabler with his number 12 uniform after cosplaying as Derek Carr last year wearing number 4. The Steelers are basically the Steelers as they always have been. Great defensively, terrible offensively, and that kind of gets me to my key stat of the game. Pittsburgh has scored just two first half touchdowns in five games this season. What does that mean? Why is it relevant? Because a slow start could lead to Fields being benched for Russell Wilson, who is finally healthy enough to play, at least by all reports. And despite Russell Wilson basically being washed, I do believe he is still a better quarterback than Justin Fields. However, I think Aiden O'Connell is complete dog shit, and that's why the Steelers are going to win this one 21 to 13. A true Middle America Big Ten football game, if there ever was one. Atlanta versus Carolina. The last time we saw Atlanta, Kirk Cousins was throwing for over 500 yards and leading a game winning drive in overtime. The Falcons' offense seems to finally be getting into gear, while the Panthers are starting to realize and come back down from their Andy Dalton high. Yes, compared to Bryce Young, Andy Dalton looks like Joe Montana, but as we've been seeing the last couple weeks, Andy Dalton is still a backup for a reason, because he's Andy Dalton, he's not a Hall of Famer, he's not a great quarterback. Still better than Bryce Young, but everything is relative, folks. The only chance that Carolina has in this game is to get some sort of pressure on Kirk Cousins. If you give Kirk Cousins a clean pocket, he's going to dice you up. But my key stat of the game is that Cousins this season has no touchdowns, five interceptions, and a 42.8 passer rating on pressure dropbacks. So he goes from being the GOAT to Ryan Leaf, Jamarcus Russell, Bryce Young territory if you get any sort of pressure on him. But luckily for the Falcons, the Panthers defense is toothless. And I think the Falcons are going to win this one pretty comfortably, 34 to 14. Dal Ass versus Detroit. The Cowpokes are coming off of a last second win versus the Steelers on the road on Sunday night. A legacy defining win for Dak Prescott, who's a conference championship version. The Cowboys are going to be without Micah Parsons and Eric Kendricks, so that might affect their defense. Meanwhile, the last time we saw the Lions, they were ripping the Seahawks a new asshole, putting up 42 points on Monday Night Football, with Jared Goff literally not throwing an incomplete pass and also catching a touchdown. The Lions are at home, so there's really zero reason, based on how I framed this, to pick the Cowboys. But that's exactly why I'm going to pick the Cowboys to win this game, because every time I think I have the NFL figured out, something comes around and fucks me back and fucks my record. But that's neither here nor there. My key stat for this game is Dallas's defense is second in hurry percentage in the league, so they will pressure the quarterback, and I do think that Jared Goof will pop out at the worst possible time and make some mistakes, just enough mistakes, while Detroit's defense can be susceptible to some big plays. I think CeeDee Lamb and Dak will have a couple big plays, and I think Jared Goof will make just enough mistakes. And he's also due for some regression after last week, let's be honest. I think the Cowboys win this one 24-20. Cincinnati versus New Jersey Giants. Oh, Cincy, what a silly little team you are. The Bengals are sitting at 1-4, which sounds like typical Bengals stuff until you realize that offensively, they've been really, really good this year, and Joe Burrow is statistically having one of his best seasons. Problem for the Bengals is their defense is not very good. Fortunately for them, Daniel Jones is coming to town, and I know that Daniel Jones had a rare good performance versus the Seahawks on the road last week, but the Seahawks have a terrible defense of their own. So who knows, maybe Jones will actually end up playing well because the Bengals defense is terrible, and although the Bengals defense may be the biggest culprit for their 1-4 start, Joe Burrow is not completely clean either. In fact, that's my key stat of the game. Burrow this season only has three turnovers so far, but all three of them have come in the fourth quarter, including a fumble six versus Kansas City, which lost Cincinnati the lead, and an interception last week versus Baltimore that allowed the Ravens to tie the game and send it into overtime. So while Burrow has been mostly really good this year, when he's been bad, it's come at the worst possible time, kind of like Tony Romo. But I'm sorry, I just don't see the Giants putting up enough points to keep up with the Bengals' offense. I think the Bengals win this 30-17. to And if you have a problem with that, well, you can just kiss me on the lips, you son of a bitch. Buffalo versus the Jets. The Bills have lost two in a row, but that's not the biggest storyline coming into this game because as with every Aaron Rodgers team, there's always a shitload of drama and inner turmoil, and we saw that with the firing of Robert Sala, a.k.a. Xerxes, earlier this week. I don't believe that that will do much to improve the Jets' offense because, let's just be honest, despite all the off-field attention he gets and how polarizing he is, Aaron Rodgers has not been a great quarterback in three years. He wasn't great his last year with the Packers. He didn't play at all last year 
outside of four snaps and he's been bad thus far this year which hey you know the guy's 41 coming off of a serious injury i get it he's still capable of some wow throws every now and then but he's not the mvp hall of fame first ballot aaron Rodgers that we might be used to and that's why i think the bills are going to end up winning this game although josh allen himself is coming off of one of the most hilariously bad games i can remember from an elite quarterback in his prime going nine for 30 and as i said in my last video i love the stat that he was the first quarterback since 1992 that had a completion percentage of 30 percent or lower while also attempting at least 30 passes so that was an extremely rare game that we saw from josh allen versus the texans and not in a good way my key stat and this kind of plays on my aaron Rodgers tidbits earlier aaron Rodgers has gone 28 starts without reaching 300 passing yards now that seems like a pretty subjective cutoff point but come on man 300 passing yards is not that much in today's nfl and it also shows that if he's not in control or in the lead he's not able to produce or put up numbers the way that he used to be that's why i think the bills are going to win this one 24 to 17.